preloaded in your GPS. So, my conclusion is GPS is useless because unless <laughs> you have a map there, you might know your position, but unless you see your position on the map, is again useless. Right? So now we'll talk a little about like some five, six sources where you can find good maps for India, which will be useful. And how a bit later on, I'll go to another presentation and show you how to uh, download these maps. I mean, from the net and how to kind of georeference them. It will be important that your map is georeferenced so that you can download it on the GPS and that you can use it then for navigation. Okay, so first let's take a look. Uh, first one, okay, so we have different types of maps from some army sources, from the Survey of India, government. We have SRTM, we'll explain in a second what that is, and we have the good old Google Maps. As I said, remember the first picture that I showed you of a real map is, one important thing of a map is the scale. Uh, scale obviously is important, eh? like a Google map is, could be, when I say Google map, I mean that Google terrain map, maybe the contour lines. The maximum resolution you get, the maximum detail you get from Google is around 1 by 25k. K means thousand, 1 by 25,000. So what does that mean? That means one unit on the map equals to 25,000 similar units in the field. For example, one centimeter on the map is going to match to, in this case, it will be 250 meters in the field. So every time hey, you go like one centimeter, one centimeter, you're actually hoping 250 meters in the field. That's the relationship. So if you take another map, say a Russian Soviet army map, one by 200,000, so this means one centimeter on your map just became two kilometer now. So you can imagine those maps are not going to be that good, right? Because within that one centimeter, uh, you almost have to walk for two kilometers. It's not flatland, it's a jungle. Remember, it could take you two hours to cover that two kilometer. Two hours you have to walk and you're just moving one centimeter. So you don't see much detail then. It's going to be useful in your two hour journey. Right? So when you get a map for trekking, I mean, this might be a good map map for biking, you do some biking in some uh, remote areas with roads and this, this is okay because on a bike you go faster, cover more distance, but on foot I would say you should get a map which is at least maximum 1 by 50,000, preferably have a map 1 by 25 or 1 by 10k uh, to have like a proper uh, detail that will be useful to kind of have enough detail to plan your journey. Okay, let's take a look one by one now uh, on each of these maps. Okay, Google Maps, I think we already covered. So I showed you a lot of Google Maps. Google Maps are beautiful because they are easily available. You can easily drag and drop in, go to any location, go to Nagari Hills, zoom in. You'll see all the peaks, the ridges, the valleys there if you zoom in deep enough. And I will also show you some tools how you can download these Google Maps and georeference them so that they come in some what they call KMZ file uh, format, which you can download in most of these Garmin units. So very easy, I mean, very quickly you will be up and running. You'll be heading out on your cycle or, or with your trekking boots to the Javadu Hills with a proper map loaded in your GPS. Uh, now let's take a look at this one, SRTM. So actually, when you say Google Maps, right, you know that Google provides these maps, but uh, the data doesn't come from Google. And, uh, you, you have seen probably on the screen that Digital Globe, copyright. So Google gets all their maps from different sources. Satellite, especially satellite map, road, road maps, I guess Google makes a lot themselves, street maps. But then when we come to the rain maps, uh, Google uh, takes the data from uh, the NASA. So somewhere uh, 13 years ago in 2000, the NASA launched a mission, uh, one or multiple satellites, I don't know, but they basically put a couple of satellites up there that kind of scan the Earth. Scan the Earth means scan the left. So what is the altitude of the different places all over the globe? I didn't go all the way from north uh, to, uh, to South Pole, but I think somewhere from 30 degrees uh, away from the North Pole to 30 degrees on the, uh, to 30 means then 60 degrees um, south latitude. They covered the entire globe. Uh, what was the precision? Of course, they cannot cover every centimeter of the planet. So the precision was three seconds. Remember, how much was the second? 30 meters out. Well, this Google terrain maps you're looking at, which uses this data, has a resolution of 3 seconds of 90 meters. Anything smaller than 90 meters is simply going to be invisible. And 90 meters is a lot to me, right? I'm just one, 172 centimeters, so 90 meters can be a big obstacle that I'm not seeing on my map. So, the nice thing with this data is that America has, I mean, the NASA has made this freely available. You can download this data 
So this is raw data, raw satellite, and it's probably processed data, but it's raw kind of relief data. So it's not going to show you contour lines. You will need to apply some tools to convert, con I mean, to extract contour lines of this, in the contour lines which you find back on the Google Perrier maps. So what you can do, these tools are available, and I'll show you maybe a live demo of some very cool stuff you can do. Next. So here, I mean, just to prove you that Google is using uh, this stuff. So here actually you see contour lines which have been generated from this SRPM data from the NASA website. And here you can see the Google Maps, I mean, without uh, the nice rounding they typically do. And you can, and you can see that the green and the white are exactly matching. So this is proving basically that those buggers are using that source for their maps. Okay, so one. Beautiful, I mean, it's good and it's not good in, in different ways. So, government, so the government, just like I think every government around the world, okay, topography is very important, not just for us as trackers, but topography is important for building cities, building roads. You need to understand the geology of your country. So every, I guess, government has spent a lot of manual initially, now we have satellites, but in the olden days it was all manual work, these uh, maps. So they have spent huge resources to kind of make um, uh, topo maps of the entire India, especially in the huge uh, continent. So, survey of map, manage these maps. These maps are actually available for, I mean, really to everyone, not free. It's like, uh, they come in paper, I, digital, they're, they're asking, I think it's a little expensive, but it's not that easily available. But traditionally, we used to go, say, to the survey of India in Gindi to get any map from Tamil Nadu. We used to go to Bangalore to get any uh, topographic map from the Survey of India in, uh, in Karnataka. So any capital of the state you can go, go to the survey and, and basically give 90 rupees for like an uh, A2, a big A2 sheet paper map. So this is a paper map, right? So you can imagine that again, paper map is a different thing uh, than, I mean, still, I mean, the fact is if you go to the next screen, you can see a Survey of India map, <coughs> next one, of uh, Kuli Hills. So you can see that this map contains much more detail than, say, Google, in the sense that it contains the contour lines. So you can see the ridges there, the, the valleys and all that stuff. You can see the circles, the peaks. So you have a lot of say, the usual contour data. But you can also see a lot of other details. You can see villages, small villages, like so many things which you'll not find in uh, like Google Maps. You'll find temples, you'll find the village trails. All these black lines are actually streams. Here you have a main valley, mainstream running. Uh, you will also see in, in places it's showing like somebody give me a list. I forgot about that. You'll also see. Uh, it also shows you. Remember, I told you steepness is not the only factor. Density of vegetation is another one. It's also showing like which places are like open grassland, which places are mixed scrub, which are dense scrub. So dense scrub means it's going to be very slow if you have to go through those areas. So a lot of, lot of detail. If you go back again, Saba, you can see here on the legend, right? Lots of uh, information is contained in this map. Huge manual efforts have gone in this. Uh, typically, many of these maps are pretty old. You can see this map is as old as me. Uh, resolution is good. Uh, many of the, the, these uh, maps from the survey are 1 by 10,000. Just imagine, like 1 centimeter, 100 meter. That's beautiful in terms of uh, usefulness for tracking. Some will be 25k, and in this case, it's a 50k map. So, very nice. If you go to the map again, and you will see that you have the latitude and longitude. So, the map is clearly what we call geo reference. You know, top left corner is exactly that point, bottom left corner is that point. So, you know. Basically, every point on this map, you can find the exact latitude, longitude with a little bit of calculation. Next. Next. Yeah. So, you might not know it, but the Americans have a closed eye on India. So, they have, if you go to the next one, so they have actually cut India and again in, in survey of India. They have cut it in some, uh, some uh, quadrants here. It's quite big quadrants. And they have for every of these blocks, this is again freely available from some, uh, some uh, educational website, some Texas University. You can download any piece of India uh, in this uh, library. So if you go to the next slide, you will see a typical uh, American Army map. So Army Map Service, AMS. So these guys have used different sources again to make this map. Obviously, they, they, they didn't always have access to India to put people here, so, but they have used different sources to also make beautiful maps. 
Again, same thing here, you see the contour lines everywhere. Uh, but in, you see much more, you can see. This is like, uh, think of this one, a national reserve forest. You can see Purimala here. And uh, you can see, like, remember, I showed you some old jeep tracks and some, uh, some old rest houses, ruins here of rest houses. All these places are clearly marked on these maps. Again, these maps, they are like pretty dated. Some of these maps are like from 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. So whatever you see on these maps, you have to be a little careful. The mountain will be there, the stream will be there, of course, after 80 uh, years. But uh, some of these human things like villages, roads, jeep tracks, of course, might have been completely uh, unused in those, say, 50 years, all of a century, and completely disappeared. Some of these things are difficult to find back now as they have not been maintained. Okay, and here you can see an example. So, as I said, one of these rest houses on that uh, American map, after a little bit of searching, right, so it's georeference, you can again see the longitude lines, you can see the latitude lines, so the kind of, apart from this point, you could kind of find the uh, exact latitude, longitude of this uh, black dot where the rest houses. So, with a little bit of searching, we were able to find some of these places which are now converted into routes, and it's quite exciting, of course, to kind of go back 100 years back in time. Uh, in this case, again, it's some uh, forest rest house built uh, along some 100 kilometers of jeep track, deep inside the Tirumaila jungle, probably used by the British as some kind of summer hunting place and rest place. Same done, of course, whatever the Americans do, the Soviet does. So, Soviet also kept an eye on uh, India split it into pieces and in the next one you can see a typical Soviet army map. Quality is a little better of this, but so is the scale. This is one by 200,000. I'm showing you the same range, so you can see all the contour lines. And again, you can clearly see those old jeep trails here, which are visible. Here a big jeep trail, here like a black line is a smaller jeep trail. Uh, and you can see water streams and everything. You can see altitudes, you can see villages in the plains. Roads, minor roads, big roads, big streams, small streams, lots of lots of details. Only problem, of course, with your uh, Soviet army map is that it's in Russian. You need to, you need to kind of practice a little bit in the Soviet also that <laughs> to be able to recognize the village names. Same thing here. So next to Tada, Tada is a right. Because many of you guys will be familiar with Tada waterfalls. Famous uh, waterfall uh, somewhere near to uh, the, Tal the, name, the Tala village. So here is Tala Falls in this valley here. You can see again that U shape which points to a stream, a valley to the right side on this ridge next to the ridge where we have a jeep trail here. This is the jeep trail this way. There is a fort, it's an old fort which was uh, it's supposed to be there according to that Soviet army map. So one time also we kind of identified that position and we were kind of uh, excited to find back old uh, walls now completely in ruins and so my entrance gate of this uh, fort which would have once been used so many years ago. Well, it's quite cool I mean, to look at some of these uh, maps which contain some things deep inside the mountains, not accessible anymore, but definitely still uh, sources remain there. This is a beautiful one, I've been playing along with this, I also put an update in our Chennai Trekking Club Facebook group last uh, week, I mean this week, uh, so th you can see 30 meters here, 30 meters it means basically one second. The SRTM data from the NASA, the NASA and from the year 2000 at a precision of 90 meters. And you also have like a freely publicly downloadable uh, data available which has been uh, taken in uh, more recent years, it's called Asterdam. So they are using some different kind of uh, technique here, radiation and reflection kind of radio meter, whatever it is. Uh, to kind of scan the entire globe now, not just America, but including internationally, have a precision of 30 meters. So this gives you very accurate data and three times the precision of Google terrain maps to kind of draw very detailed contour lines of any place in the world. You can download any data for any place in the world from this and generate contour lines, do a little bit of manipulation and basically uh, get it in a format that you can download in the GPS. Okay, so then we have mapping tools here. So this is a little more technical. I think we kind of reach the end of, I would say, the easy, moderate kind of, uh, I mean, non techy non techy kind of boot camp. If some people want to move on, uh, you can move on. Uh, it's going to become a little more technical, but I think it's useful. I mean, people who are really serious, who really want to start downloading, manipulating maps, 
I'm gonna give you like a show you a couple of uh, free freeware shareware tools which are very I mean useful in manipulating maps, yeah, georeferencing maps, putting trails from GPS logs, and copying maps and trails from GPS is overlaying trails and maps so that you can kind of analyze the tracks you have gone to and, and a lot of interesting analysis. So Again, people, if you're thirsty, we have something to drink there. I don't know whether people are passing some bottles. We have also a lot of biscuits. Uh, I hope that bag is not unopened. <laughs> you can pass, it, pass through some biscuits, please. I'll help yourself and distribute it. Uh, just finish them off. Okay, so maybe, maybe shall we give five minutes? You can yeah. drink a little bit again and uh, have some biscuits. I don't go to my Cisco mail, I don't want to see office emails now. Top left to uh, top left to bottom right, sorry. Right, so then again, the computer or any mapping program, any place you see on this map, they can actually calculate the relative uh, distance of point and give you the exact latitude and longitude of that map. So this is a must. I mean, a map can only be used intelligently by any software program, mapping program, uh, can only be uh, used to put your trail on top of a map can only be downloaded in the GPS if you're going to georeference first. A JPEG image, a paper map is useless until you georeference it. Next. Again, basically what this, uh, this, uh, G I mean, this OZ Explorer thing does, so I have a bitmap here, I georeferenced it, so it basically created like a dot map file in, in this case, and it's basically showing me, right, like uh, this XY here, like 90 pixels, 85 pixels, the, the, the bottom, uh, sorry, the top left corner corresponds to this latitude, longitude, and then somewhere the second point at the, the, the bottom uh, right corresponds to this one. In this case, well, they have given four reference points, but two reference points is enough to kind of georeference your map. <coughs> so, and after you georeference the map, right, you can use tools. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools. I'm going to show you some very nice stuff on Global Mapper. It's, it's a shareware tool, I mean, you can download it and you can do quite a bit with it without paying because it's, it's quite expensive, it's 20,000 rupees or a US dollar, so just like so. So after you georeference the map, right, you can open it in Global Mapper and you can then uh, kind, of, kind of draw the grid. So what you could do is say, you can say every 5 seconds or something, 5 seconds, remember, 1 second is 30, so every 150 meter, I can draw uh, longitude and I can draw latitude. Then you can make a print out of this and you can carry it along with you. And it's pretty useful, right? Even with a smartphone, if, if, if it's my phone shows I'm on this latitude, longitude, with this grid here, in this fine grid, I can immediately see, oh, I'm somewhere in this grid in between this latitude, between this longitude, and this latitude. So putting a grid on a map is also a useful thing. In case you don't have a GPS or something, but in case you don't, cannot download the map in the GPS, you can typically put a latitude long to get take a print out, that's what I used to do. It's always good to have a big map because on the GPS screen you will only see like a small portion of the map for like your uh, immediate like say 500 meter or two kilometers. So you always want to have a, a big view also by carrying a map print out before it be again georeferenced with the grid. Next. Yeah, and this is an awesome tool actually, I mean, the easiest way to get started, I mean, with navigation and what we mostly do every weekend in, in uh, CTC is, is this one, Terra Incognita. So up till now, uh, we mostly use Google Terrain Maps, right? So you remember this kind of thing, I mean, we just take a live view also. But basically the, the pure contour lines, which are taken from NASA, SRTM, 90, 90 meter, <coughs> or at 3 seconds precision. So again, the Google Maps that you see in maps.google.com is, is like a bit map, right? It's absolutely useless because you don't have a clue where exactly that latitude, longitude, that map belongs. Correct? You can take a print out of, of a map of Navalapuram, but GPS won't be able to have a clue, like, okay, you're basically having a screenshot, a bit, uh, a bit map of that uh, Google Maps screen, and no mapping program, no GPS can do anything with it because it could be somewhere in North America or in Europe. So this tool actually is beautiful, Terra Incognita, yeah, an old version I think. This thing actually allows you to, what we call, download multiple uh, different map sources. So one map you can download is Google Terrain Maps. You can actually say, take uh, the whole terrain of uh, Nagalapuram, right, mark a rectangle. So then you zoom in to the maximum level, typically it's 250 meters here, so 4 meters per pixel. 
and you then say, uh, with this tool, you can actually save this. Again, it has a georeference map, so it will take a screenshot, it will save a bitmap, that's fine, but it will clearly say what is the latitude, longitude of the bottom, uh, top, uh, left, either, the bottom left, either bottom left. So, very nice, because after that you can simply, uh, typically you can save this in a KMZ file, you can download it in any MATLAB mapping program, you can view exactly where it is, you can download it in your GPS. That's what we mostly do in CDC, we get it through Google Maps, Download it from Terra and Vita. Next one. You say for the edge, no reference, and you put a grid on top. Global map is a very nice tool in the sense that you can load several layers. So you can load any map, any georeference map, obviously, right? Because uh, the tool has to understand where, where it is located. And on top of the map, you can, down, uh, you can show multiple trails. So here, actually, you can see a, a real typical world, uh, real world trail. It's real world because it's a little jaggy, and you can also see, as I mentioned, right in some places you can see interruptions. But these are typically places you can see. I see a lot of black here, black here. So probably I had a couple of hundred meter vertical left, right, so that I didn't have a clear view to three, four satellites to get an exact position. So GPS signal uh, kind of blanked out on a couple of places here where there was no good visibility to the satellite. Right, global map is really nice. So here another thing. Uh, next one, Saba. So you can really overlay different maps on each other. Remember I showed you that red, uh, green stuff a little bit earlier, that basically NASA data, so that data can, is in this case, overlaid with uh, these, these, these maps that you see here. It's basically coming from the Soviet Army maps. So I'm basically combining two different maps together, putting a certain transparency on the top level map, and I'm combining basically the information from two maps together. The, the, the colon, which is the, uh, the altitude from the NASA, Aster them, and uh, in the streams and, and jeep trails and everything from the Soviet Army map, uh, all combined in one nice kind of uh, view, properly overlaid on each other, of course. <coughs> so another thing, uh, another way of georeferencing something is, is it's actually not a good example, but say for example. Uh, Hey, uh, like say for example, you have a map somewhere, you go to a tourist place, Uti, right? So you have, you go to the tourist information office, you get a nice map there, it has some data which is useful, I mean, it's not as useful as your contour map, but it has some forest rest house, it has some other data which is useful and you would like to kind of understand, right, where all these places are, say, on, 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 on Google Earth or on another map. So what you can do in Google Earth is you can do something what we call you can do a file and you can open actually a bitmap, like you can scan in that map from Udi tourist map, and you can actually in Google Earth, you can nicely stretch it, bend it, and you can move it so that it actually goes onto the right position. So you can do that by actually making it a little transparent, eh? and you can see that, say for example, on our tourist map, there might be a dam here, you can nicely match it with the dam, say on Google Earth. You might have another place here, a small building which is visible on Google, and you can match it with uh, the Udi tourist map. So you just have two reference points in either map, which are visible in either map. You put it exactly on each other, and uh, you will actually input kind of georeference your map. Your UT tourist map will be in the proper place, and any other place you can kind of correlate with then, uh, like say, Google satellite map. So um, here you can see three layers on top of each other. You have Nagalapuram, you have like Google Earth View, on top of that you have a contour map which is georeferenced and again on top of that you have some trail here to the central peak from the southeast we go up a cup, we climb up on the central peak, we go to the picnic pool for people that come to the east and we come back to that side. So very nice with these tools like Google Earth, Global Mapper, you can put layers on layers on layers to combine different information, different maps as well as GPS trails from different tracks all in the same reference. Uh, uh, view, which is very interesting actually. That's how we mostly plan new trails. Okay, and this is also, this is the last slide before I maybe give a small practical demo. But this is what we call, just like you geo tag or you geo reference your maps, you can do the same with photos. Every camera that you use, they have a decent camera, has a clock built in, right? So you take a picture and you know that uh, in that JPEG that you copy from your flashcard in the and then you will have all kinds of data, like data about the camera, maybe ISO, maybe uh, 
aperture, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But we'll also have a timestamp there. Okay, so that's fine. You have taken a picture there near a waterfall and you have a timestamp. In the same group, there's somebody who can use a GPS, right? Who is also taking timestamps, right? Because you have seen it, it's every location contains a timestamp. So now it's an inter interesting thing. When you come back home, you take that GPS trail on the computer, right? And you have all the photos that you have taken here during your trek. You can correlate this time-wise because both have a timestamp. So you can actually, for every photo, find the approximate location where that photo was taken. You can put that in the photo, and if that's what we call geotagging a photo, you put a latitude, longitude, approximate, of course, in that JPEG file. And after you upload it, say in Google Picasa, Google Picasa will be able to retrieve that information and will be able to show you, look, this peak, this waterfall, whatever, this campsite was taken at this position. So that's pretty cool also to do. I mean, not many people do that, but that would actually be a good habit after the like, that you geotag your photos. Okay, so this is the last slide. I'm just going to give you a small demo now, just one, maybe 15 minutes, with a couple of uh, interesting uh, just programs and applications so that we have, I mean, maybe just 10 minutes, I don't have much left to say. <coughs> uh, first thing we'll have to do is, I'm actually looking at another screen, so we'll just see. Anyone is familiar with Lenovo recent models of laptops together? What happened was an equal screen on the laptop and, and the projector because I think it's giving me a different screen here. My old Lenovo had an option here to an external screen option. Maybe one more, one more, one more. 